So, hi everyone. Folks, the lunch break is likely over and the next talk is about to, be, to begin. Please <laughs> take your seats. <laughs> Okay, let's start with the next talk. It's called Triton for MTIA. Brief introduction. I am from Meta. My name is Roman, and together with two of my colleagues, Shintaro and Ilya, we will present you our work on porting Triton for our machine learning accelerator at Meta called MTIA. The short outline, we'll talk a bit about what this accelerator is and what the hardware provides. And then the motivation of porting Triton for MTIA will let you know about our experience with building, uh, you know, doing a feasibility study and building a prototype of uh, this, uh, you know, Triton for our hardware, our next plans to productize it, and some open questions or uh, wishes that we have with regards to extending Triton to support custom hardwares, heterogeneous hardwares better. Okay. Let's start with what is MTIA? Well, MTIA stays for Meta's in-house ML accelerator, Meta Training and Inference Accelerator to be more precise. It was publicly announced in May this year, and you can follow this, uh, you know, links on the presentation when, when it will be shared later to see video, to read the paper, and to see the blog on our website about it. The main purpose of developing this ML accelerator is the following. First of all, we want to, you know, improve the perf per TCO for our ML hardware. Secondly, we uh, care about generality and programmability of this hardware. And third, we want to provide best in class developer uh, experience for our ML engineers so that they can quickly, you know, onboard their workloads, develop their kernels and so on. So briefly about the hardware itself. The accelerator is a grid of processing elements, eight by eight uh, elements, so 64. And then each of the PEs, which you can see on the right hand side, is uh, having its own set of fixed function units. It has DPE engine, which is like matrix multiplier in hardware. It has SFU unit, which is pretty much SIMD engine for handling things like activations, lookup tables, base functions, and so on. Pretty wide. It has also MLU, which is a, a memory layout transformation engine useful for things like transpose and so on. And it has two general purpose RISC-V cores. One of them is vector core and one of them is a scalar core. The scalar core is mostly used as a control core for the rest of the fixed function units on this PE and the vector core is used for the uh, CMD vector-like uh, computation that cannot be handled efficiently by the fixed function units. The general idea about how you program this uh, hardware is that we use SPMD programming model uh, in some sense similar to what CUDA or OpenCL do, based on the location of processing element in the grid, it decides what needs to be done. Uh, and uh, we provide currently two mechanisms to program it. One is our in-house MTA-specific, domain-specific language called Knife, uh, which in some sense plays a similar role to our hardware uh, compared to what uh, Triton, you know, the role of Triton playing towards CUDA. So it's some abstraction over the raw, you know, C++ API, which removes a lot of boilerplates, uh, improves your developer efficiency, and makes programming easier. The, in terms of like what's actually going on on each PE, it is three stages. First stage, load the data you want to work on into your local scratch memory, which is available on each processing element. And this is a bit different than using shared memory with CUDA or Triton because in CUDA and Triton, it's more like optimization. 
you don't need to load into this memory. On our accelerator, for many of the fixed function units, the data needs to be present in this faster local scratch memory. And then you do the processing on your fixed function units, matrix multiplier, SFU, and so on, and at the end you store it back to memory. Uh, another interesting uh, aspect here is that uh, many fixed function units are programmed via extended ISA instructions, and the dependencies between those uh, computations effectively they like form a, a data flow graph. And this data flow graph is supported in hardware and dependencies between operations are tracked in hardware, which allows a synchronous execution where the order is maintained in hardware. Now, why do we want to have Triton for MTIA? Well, it's because of you know increasing Triton adoption. First of all, the adoption of the industry is increasing. That's why we are all here today, right, sitting here. Secondly, in site meta specifically, uh, there are two. Uh, you know, it, it also gaining traction. First of all, PyTorch 2.0 uh, with Inductor make active use of uh, Triton when they generate infused kernels that are then like handled by Triton and are running on uh, CUDA backend. Secondly, uh, there are teams inside Meta who start developing or porting kernels to Triton to improve their performance and so on. So, uh, it's already getting traction. Now for MTIA itself as a new hardware, it's extremely important to, you know, for, de for developer efficiency to provide good kernel authoring experience. And our North Star, ideally, we want to have the same unified approach to kernel authoring and Triton seems to fit the bill basically, right, in this regard, because it would allow us to develop uh, the kernels in the same way for both GPUs and our custom hardware and maybe even reuse the kernels as is, not only the tooling. Now, the open question is, of course, like Triton by default was developed for GPU hardware, so can we port to our hardware at all? And if so, can we still be you know, efficient and so on? And this part will be covered now by Shintaro, who will tell you about our prototype. Thank you. Thanks, Roman. So Shintaro. So I mean, our MDI hardware, HPE, has risk five CPU. So in the worst case, we can always lower it to single core risk five CPU code, and then everything should work. However, of course, the problem is that function. I mean, performance. So as we see, like I mean, our MDI hardware has like I mean special fixed function fixed function units, local scratch memory. So I mean, we need to use it reasonably efficiently. Maybe it doesn't really reach to the how to say they very manually optimized like I mean gem libraries, but still like I mean should achieve a reasonably good performance. So in that sense, I mean in this feasibility study, we wanted to understand whether the MTI, uh, sorry, the Triton kernel can be efficiently lowered to the reasonable, reasonably performant MTI kernel. And if it is not possible, we would like to understand what the blocker is. So this is a prototype. Um, at that point, I mean, a year ago, there was no Microsoft lineage, I mean, pass and all the stuff. So we implemented our own prototype using Python. I think the left one, the red arrow, is showing the GPU lowering path. And then I think the blue one is a right Triton for MTI implementation. And then we took the orange one. So basically we use, I mean, we write a Python code, I think around like 5,000 lines or 10,000 lines of code. And then we generate CC++ and then we run it on MDI hardware. So we wrote several kernels, including some element wise to layer norm to I mean other kernels. And then we found that most we can map to DMA engine, direct memory access engine. The most Triton ops, for example, uh, TL.exp, TL.dot, TL.dot, some like I mean, other element wise operators, we can map to fixed function units. And of course, I mean, some operators cannot be mapped to fixed function units, but because Triton uses tensor ops, so like, and because of the embarrassingly parallel tensor, 
I mean, embarrassingly parallel, embarrassingly parallel tensor semantics, we can map it to the vector, you know, risk five vector code. So as a result, I mean, we could get pretty good performance. So the left side, I think the lower is better because it shows the execution time. That, so if the red one is lower, it means that it performs better than the existing kernels, blue one. It shows that, I mean, for long tail ops like layer norm or transpose, we can achieve pretty good performance. Only the exception we found is FC kernel fully connected layer because, I mean, we need for MTIA, we need some like synchronization operations to load the data as, I mean, synchronously according to some like MP topology aware stuff. So, I mean, it hasn't been supported, but other than this, I mean, we could achieve reasonably good performance. So overall, I mean, based on this like, I mean, promising result, I mean, we are working on the next step. I think Ilya will explain it. All right, so what are the next steps for us? So given the promising results uh, of the feasibility study, we are currently focusing on productizing Triton as a kernel de development tool for MCAA. And uh, our implementation is a proper Triton uh, backend that takes Okay. So uh, we, we wanted to bring up some open questions related to the support uh, of uh, non-GPU hardware such as ML accelerators. So first of all, let's talk about memory accesses. Um, so ML accelerators often do not support or support only inefficiently uh, direct um, load and stores and uh, gather scatter operations. And instead, they rely on the DMA engine that provides access to the strided memory regions, uh, usually with some, with some restrictions. And uh, um, so traditionally, Triton kernels use, uh, at least initially, uh, non-block pointers. And it's uh, kind of highly non-trivial uh, how to convert a non-block pointer kernel to the kernel that uses block pointers. And uh, so for ML accelerators, it would be uh, highly preferred to use block pointers. And also, as we saw in the previous uh, presentations, it can help on GPUs too. Um, also, quick note, uh, as we know, ML accelerators often uh, expose explicitly multiple levels of memory hierarchy. So it would be interesting to think about uh, whether we could bring this on, in, on the Triton level, uh, perhaps uh, by using some hints. All right, so another aspect is Asynchronous com uh, com computation. Uh, Triton, as of now, is uh, is an imperative language, and for example, on MTA, uh, computation on fixed function units and uh, DMA operations are inherently asynchronous. So it would be interested to think uh, interesting to think uh, whether we could bring some aspects of asynchronous computation on the Triton level, and perhaps it would require some changes um, on the on the language, some extensions. Um, another important aspect is the communication. So in the previous slides, we showed some results of the feasibility study, and uh, we saw that there is some gap for the uh, fully connected layer kernels. Um, this gap exists because these kernels, to achieve high performance, they use uh, communication between P's. Uh, so in particular, there are two patterns. Uh, in one pattern is called DMA broadcast, and in which, in this pattern, we combine uh, P's into broadcast groups. And uh, broadcast group reads the data from the shared memory, DRAM or SRAM once, and then uses network on chip to distribute data uh, between the P's. 
and that helps us to save on memory bandwidth. And uh, another uh, another pattern here is that when the reduction dimension is pretty large, we often find it uh, useful to split computation along the this reduction dimension, and that requires PEs to communicate together to compute uh, the final result. So this is the cross PE reduction network. And uh, yeah. Okay. So in conclusion, so Triton provides, or we, we think that Triton provides um, a reasonable and good unifying programming abstraction, and it improves developer efficiency of kernel authoring. And uh, we also show that uh, Triton for MTA is feasible. And uh, we we welcome efforts for, to improve Triton DSL and its implementation for uh, better support for ML accelerators. And uh, we would really uh, be interested um, in participation in, in such efforts. Um, so. That's the end of our presentation, and shameless plug, we are hiring. Um, thank you. Uh, so the question is, uh, did we try to um, implement the asynchronous op operations? Okay, uh, yeah, so I think this is still an, an early area. Uh, hardware automatically sequences and um, controls uh, the de dependencies between the synchronous task force. All right, thank you. Thanks, Roman and team. Next, we have the using Triton IR for high performance fusions in the XLA by George. Just going to open the presentation. Yeah. 